In this video, we put together all the pieces to arrive at the complete transformer. We also discuss some limitations of transformers and ways to overcome them. Let's dive right in. Transformers, putting it all together. Let's get started by recapping two concepts that transformers are using. The first one is scaled dot product attention, and the second one is multi-head attention. And having unpacked these concepts in the previous videos, here we can now use the original visualizations from the transformers paper. So getting started with scaled dot product attention, we have a matrix with queries, we have a matrix with keys, and a matrix with values. We multiply the queries with the keys transposed. We scale by dividing by the square root of the dimension of the embedding. Then we have this optional masking step. It's optional because it only happens in the decoder and only for future positions. So we're not allowed to attending to words, to input words from the future. And therefore, before performing the softmax, these are masked out by minus infinity. Then the softmax is computed, and the result of the softmax, this is the attention weight that is going to be multiplied with the values. And again, in a matrix multiplication. So this is the concept of scaled dot product attention. And in multi-head attention, this features here. Now, in multi-head attention, we have multiple heads. And so we take the inputs. Actually, this figure is from the original paper. Let's make this consistent to not be confusing. So we have these inputs, queries, keys, and values. Each of them is multiplied by several different matrices of learnable weights in order to get the query key and value matrices for the different heads. Then for each of the different heads, this type of scaled dot product attention here is computed. And then the different types of outputs are concatenated and are put through this weight matrix for the outputs in order to get the multi-head attention. Now, multi-head attention features in various places in the transformer architecture, namely here, here, and here. And this here is the masked version. And also note that some of these are self-attention, namely this first one here is self-attention. So these inputs here are being used as keys and queries and values. Uh, the same one here. But over here, we use keys and values from the encoder and only the queries, those actually come from the decoder. Now, starting at the beginning of this figure, we have the inputs. We embed the inputs using a learned input embedding. Then we have our positional encoding that's being added to the inputs. The result goes into the first encoder particular into the first multi-head self-attention layer. Then we had these residual connections and layer norm. Next, we have the outputs again going to the feed-forward layer and a residual connection with layer norm. Then we have n of these encoder blocks. In the original paper, n was 6. And then Next, we have the decoder blocks. There's also n of these. 
and they're very similar to the encoder blocks. We have the multi-head self-attention, then we have the encoder-decoder attention. This is different from the encoder. And then we have the feed-forward layers, followed by the linear layer and the softmax layer. Now, having recapped the transformer architecture, let's have a look at some issues of standard transformers. And the first issue, and one of the biggest issues, is that the attention matrix can be very complex. The self-attention matrix specifies how much each input should attend to each other input. And so if we have n inputs, then of course, this matrix has a size of O of n squared. And well, if n is large, for example, yeah, thousands of words, then this attention matrix would have to be extremely large and computationally very tricky. Now, this attention matrix typically has large values on the diagonal because typically our embeddings don't change too much from one step to the next. But there are also off-diagonal values that are of importance. And there is a lot of recent work that aims to reduce the quadratic complexity by approximating this attention matrix. Other limitations of transformers and some ways to overcome them are as follows. So attention can't deal with texts of arbitrary length. Because if we have a book, for example, with millions of words, then well, we would have to have an input sequence of millions of words. And so a standard attention matrix would be millions times millions. That is clearly infeasible. And so what's typically done is actually that the input length is restricted to, for example, 512 words. And a longer text is simply split into segments or chunks of 512 words that are being fed into the system one by one and then post-processed afterwards. One other issue of transformers is that, well, they have very low inductive bias. This is not necessarily an issue. It can also be a blessing. They're extremely powerful because of this lower inductive bias, and they can really learn what's in the data. But the flip side of that is that well, they need a lot of data in order to train well. And as a result, they are actually very often combined with self-supervised learning, where you can generate arbitrary amounts of training data. An alternative is to pre-train them on massive data sets. And these massive data sets are typically closed source and not available to the public. And finally, transformers typically need to be very large to reach good performance. But on the flip side, very nicely, they parallelize very well on modern specialized hardware. So even though they are very large, they can be trained much faster than not as large uh, recurrent neural networks, for example. And because transformers typically need to be very large to reach good performance, and because they are so data hungry, they're typically trained by the biggest companies with the biggest compute power. So for example, Google and OpenAI have trained the largest language models. And then, after these language models are trained, they can actually be released and later on be fine-tuned to other types of data. And this brings us to the end of this lecture. And as always, I'd like to leave you with some questions for you to activate the material. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.